Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Joshua Anonis. I'm going to review the movie Venom, Let There Be Carnage. Um, we're not going to do any spoilers, so no spoilers ahead. This is kind of a spoiler-free review. It's just kind of my reaction, my feelings, and do I recommend it or not. As far back as I can remember, like 1995, I've wanted to see the character of Venom go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the character of Carnage. The two is like legendary. Maximum Carnage, Super Nintendo, is it ringing any bells? With this legendary matchup so built up, does it live up to the hype? Uh, with how I felt about part one, I didn't expect a lot going into this one. I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh, the first thing that I noticed was thank Christ they got rid of that ridiculous red wig that Woody Harrelson was wearing in the post credit scene of part one in Venom. Uh, God, that thing was cringe. The movie introduces us right away to the character of Shriek. She's kind of like the love interest of Cletus Cassidy in the movie. Uh, I found like this relationship kind of worked because it allowed the chance for Woody Harrelson's character to have a little bit more depth and maybe just another character to bounce off of and another villain that um, has part of the star studying cast that was in this film. Um, one thing that I did notice too, as far as the relationship between Woody Harrelson and Naomi, was that under Andy Serkis' direction, the characterization was done a lot better than it was done in the first film. It seemed like Andy Serkis put more care and attention into how these characters were portrayed um, and what the audience was supposed to feel about them and their story. They kind of had a first, a second, and a third act, which we'll get to in a minute. What Andy Serkis seems to do right in Venom, Let There Be Carnage, is something I feel like a lot of directors can maybe take a little bit of a cue from. I feel like we have to make our movies a little bit shorter. We don't need so much exposition and so much added subplots to make a good story work. Not every film needs to be two and a half to three hours long. Um, Andy Serkis put this movie, I think, at a brisk hour and 33 minutes, hour and 36 minutes, something like that, and that includes a mid credit scene. So that's kind of insane when you think about it. But none of it feels sacrificed to the time that was being told for the story. Everything gets in there, there's a first, a second, and a third act. So kudos to him for being able to bring that format back, something that was sorely needed in the genre. Um, big props to that, and it works super well in Venom, one of the biggest highlights in the film in terms of what it's doing. You'll notice right away that from the Shriek opening scene, the movie kind of hits the ground running, and there's not a lot of time for a break. Andy Serkis allows the film to move fluidly from one scene to the next without so much exposition dump or pausing or a time for reflection. It just brings the audience in for the ride. Um, we'll get to a couple of things why that could be detrimental to it, but for the most part work. But Andy Serkis does one thing fantastically. He doesn't assume the audience is dumb. How do I say this? because he allows everything that you should have known from the first film work on its own merit to fill in the blanks where it need be to keep the movie moving, flowing and moving along without reminding the audience or hitting him over the head with reminders of what we should have already seen. Sorry, this is kind of a universe thing. By now, you gotta get used to that. And now let's talk about the action. To me, he delivers the action with such frenetic energy I loved it, and the CGI was top notch, as only Andy Serkis can do it. I mean, hell, this is the same guy that practically pioneered the CGI behind Gollum, which became the first motion picture like landmark in CGI animation. But I gotta say, overall, it's a pretty fun movie. I mean, if I had one gripe, maybe I would say it's that Eddie Brock and Cletus Cassidy, but played by Woody Harrelson, kind of reminded me of that dynamic you got from John Travolta and Nicolas Cage in Face Off. And I would have loved to have seen more screen time where the two of them just bring in the most intense performance with the most goofy premise and stakes at hand, but just completely giving it 100% of their all in those moments. Two symbiotes controlling them, could you imagine that? Um, the third act delivers somewhat on that premise. But could there have been more of it? Right, so as far as post credits, everyone knows there's something going to be happening that's very big. Yes, the implications are large. There's one mid post credit scene. Um, have you been watching Sony movies? Have you been watching the MCU movies? Absolutely none of this will come to a surprise to you. I won't spoil it here. 
but it will be fun. I hope the audience reacted the way that my audience did at my screening. They were just enjoy uh, with that uh, post credit scene. It's a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. I thought uh, they did a really good job with saying, hey, like the Venom is a very viable franchise. Like forget what happened with part one. Notice the higher tomato rate made a uh, tomato meter rating that this one's gotten compared to the first one. And this isn't a bandwagon review. I do have my gripes with it, like I said. Um, but it's a large improvement. Um, the brisk pacing is the biggest, biggest, biggest improvement. The superhero genre, I think, can learn a little bit more from that. Uh, take that from Andy Serkis, because we do need to tighten these stories up. We don't need two and a half hour epics to tell an Ant-Man story sometimes. It's just the way it is. Go see it. It's way better than its predecessor, in my humble opinion. As you may know, I just don't really like that one that much. I do hope Andy Serkis does come back. I think he had a better voice for this than Ruben Fletcher did for part one. Um, if he does part three, I'll be even more excited to tune back in to see what they do. There's some setups. I won't spoil it. Um, there is clearly some setups, though, for what could happen in a Venom 3. Um, so I'm super excited for maybe Andy Serkis to come back because I'm liking what he's doing with the franchise. I think he kind of has a good grasp on what worked in the first one, amplified it, um, and tightened it up and made a very cohesive story from it. Anyways, y'all tell me your thoughts. Let me know what you think. Like, comment, share, and subscribe if you haven't to the channel. Leave your comments down below and let me know what you thought. Have a good night. Thank you for watching. Like, share, and comment, and subscribe, folks. And as usual, we'll see you on the next one.